This video is going to be covering how you could get crossovers installed on your MacBook so you could play Windows games on your Mac. So I'm going to be testing this on the M1 MacBook Air. There's been a lot of benches out that have been done before. My specific setup is going to be testing out not just the native resolution, but also 1440p. So once you get crossovers installed, it's as simple as installing a new Windows application, choosing Steam, and just installing it. There's some options you could do here, but for the most part in my testing, I've been able to just click right through and install directly into Steam. The next thing you'll want to install is the DXVK Vulkan settings. This can help get more compatibility with your games. And the last thing you'll want to install is the Direct X for modern games. This will be the last library you'll want to install. It's important to note here that most of these installs should be in the same bottle as crossovers calls it so you just want to select steam for each one you're doing depending on the order of operations choose to install steam first then either dvx or direct x for modern games so let's get right into the testing the first one we're going to test out is alien isolation and uh, unfortunately, even when I tested this on the Mac OS on that default version, it was running really slow here on crossovers. It doesn't even launch at all. So it's not perfect. I went ahead and downloaded a lot of games and Batman doesn't run apex legends doesn't run any game that uses DRM will not run with crossovers, but fortunately going down this list, Bioshock infinity does. Now there is a preface. I won't say it's fully compatible because the menus don't even work. I literally had to just press enter, enter, enter to get into the game to start loading. It's also important to note that during this recording, not only am I using the A600 to record my screen, I'm actually also doing a QuickTime record or an OBS record, which does slightly limit some of the performance on rendering, which I did some tests earlier on my YouTube video of showcasing that. So when doing OBS, you may get slightly lower graphics. So if I switch into the video, you can see there's some stuttering. There's actually a lot of graphical issues, but it tries to chug along and play at a most 50 FPS. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward or play this quickly so you could kind of see how the graphics are. It's really not 100% playable and I expect that these graphical glitches continue throughout the game. Um, now if this somehow gets resolved with future Rosetta 2 updates or crossovers updates to support better DirectX rendering, um, you could get better gameplay. Even here in the lighthouse you see textures popping in and out and stuff of that nature. Now it does give me hope actually that you know, later on as things get patched, things get resolved, could actually work out to be able to play this game 100% on a crossover emulation. So I did get some inconsistencies with Crisis. Sometimes it launched, sometimes it didn't, and this recording it did not. Halo doesn't run or just cause four. Even in Halo, when you choose to run with the anti-disable, if you're doing single player or want to play campaigns, it does not run. And as you can see here, just cause four crashes immediately. Now, I was pleasantly surprised that Max Payne 3 does run pretty well on the M1 emulation on crossover after you get, of course, the DirectX installed and the DXVK installed. It will launch and it will boot, and though there are some graphical glitches, it does run pretty well. So for my testing, of course, I was trying the 2K resolution and I had to put normal settings. There is some inconsistencies when trying to do DirectX 9, DirectX 10, or DirectX 10.1 but for the most part I found it to load and go pretty smoothly. Now remember that we are running this using screen recording or OBS so the settings you're seeing on screen will run better for you even if you're not running on a 2k monitor and running it internally on the internal monitor it is only 1440 by 900 so you should get better frames. Now I don't know if it's an issue with my mouse or whatnot but if you watch in this gameplay footage I was actually having some issues aiming. I'm not sure if that's actually even a problem with the game, um, but it is something to consider when deciding to play this game. Um, for the most part though, really surprised, pleasantly surprised with how it's performing. It seemed pretty good to me. Graphics were loading fine. Wasn't too much graphical issues, but there were some. Um, and um, for the most part, an enjoyable game.
The next game I tested out was Path of Exile. I will make another caveat to my testing methodology on this performance recording. And not only was it using OBS, but it was also going off an external hard drive. So if you do install your games locally on the MacBook Air, you should expect better load times than what I'm experiencing myself here. Now gameplay wise, it was kind of choppy. I was getting some load issues, some lag issues when playing. Um, some stuttering, even when I turn the settings down to the lowest, definitely not something I would consider playing, um, not yet at the current form with the 11.1 beta and the current crossover version at 20. Now it's time to think with portals. So for this setting, of course, I turned up the settings to go to the native resolution of my computer, which is 2560 by 1440p. And then I went ahead and tried to max out the settings. So I'm going to skip in the video of me doing that because there's an annoying pop-up that comes every time you do it. But after setting all the settings right, I was able to test around playing in portals, trying to solve this using my not companion cube and eventually getting it right. Um, but you know, for the most part, it does run really well, getting around 50 to 60 FPS at at least the 1440p resolution. You'll probably get better frames or a consistent 60 frames at least running on the native monitor. And I would say for the most part, this game runs pretty well. I'd seen some videos online where Team Fortress 2 kind of gets some choppiness. So I'm not exactly sure why Team Fortress 2 is choppy, but this one's good. Um, definitely something that may get patched later with either new betas or crossover updates as I've mentioned before. The next game I tested out was Sonic Mania which runs perfectly fine both on the internal monitor and also on my external fully max 2k settings. Um, didn't really notice any graphical glitches, got pretty consistent frames at whatever frames that Sonic Mania runs at. I think it's at 60 FPS. Um, but for the most part, it was really good and everything ran fine. So no complaints here. Now I was a bit surprised that Super Meat Boy didn't run. Kind of showed some small frames there. It crashes on load. The next game I tested out was Torchlight 2. I was expecting this game to run well, but honestly, I was getting almost 20 FPS on whatever setting I was choosing. Also, I'll note as a caveat to anyone who's skipping around in this video, again, I'm running these games off of my external hard drive, which is way slower than the M1 MacBook SSD, so that's going to increase your loading times. Um, but for the most part, you know, I would say Torchlight 2, not really an enjoyable experience playing on crossovers. Now the last game I tested out was Witcher 3. I had seen some other YouTubers showing how to do this. One of them was telling me to do the DVX and that's how I got it installed along with the DirectX for modern games. Now for the most part I had to put my settings all the way low at least when I was recording this using OBS or screen recording. Uh, but for the most part, I was able to get some better settings when testing off screen, as in just using a camera to record the settings. So like I mentioned before, there are some limitations to my testing methodology, such as using a screen recording and also coming from an external hard drive. Those of you who watching may get better performance when playing this. I've seen other YouTubers get satisfactory results. For me, I had to turn most of my settings down, uh, but after that, I found that it was a playable experience, maybe at 40 to 50 FPS. So this is something that you guys could consider playing and quite an amazing feat, to be honest, playing off a double emulation type thing with crossovers emulating windows. So like I said, I did want to show some testing when turning screen recording off and uh, right now you're going to be seeing straight from the A6000 camera. So this doesn't get, have, you know, as much fidelity as quality if I show it full screen, but you get a gist of some of the ideas of how it would be performing running off an external hard drive. Um, there are some, I would, I would say that the lag is probably coming from the external hard drive. If it's on an SSD, it probably would perform better and, you know, less uh, stuttering. Also, I would also mention that you know, if you guys aren't running off an external monitor, running on 1440 by 900 is definitely going to get you better frames than running on the 2K2560 by 1440. Hope you guys enjoyed this extended review of some playtesting. I know that I've seen some crossover uh, YouTube reviews and I wanted to just do some of the games that maybe some people aren't playing besides Witcher. Um, if you have any requests below on specific games you want, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, 
Um, look forward to my extended testing as I use it during my work week on Microsoft Office Suite and stuff of that nature. See you guys soon.